Okay, I've been asked lately about our auto siphons in this new system that we built for Charlotte Ann. So I thought I'd go through it. Uh, and the most important thing about an auto siphon that you need to understand is water flow. Without proper water flow in or out, your auto siphons will not function, period. I don't care what you do. As you can see here, we've got our water inlet. It's the 1,200 gallon pump, uh, 1,200 gallon per hour pump. We actually, we have a 90 dub just so you can see it. We normally point that straight down into the tank, keep this fish tank stirred up. That way we don't have a whole lot of uh, buildup of, of waste material and food and what have you. Um, these, this right here, we've got two more here and here. That's actually our uh, pipes going back out to the grow beds, and we'll look at those in just a minute. This small three-quarter inch pipe right here, this is our overflow that goes back to the sump. So as our water rises up, if, if we clog this up, our pump will, our tank will actually overflow, uh, which will run the sump out of water. Now does that kill the fish? No. What that does is run the sump out of water and possibly burn a tank up. Um, so we, we do what we got to do to keep this clean. We're about to put a cap, a uh, filter cap on this, just to make sure we don't get anything large in here and actually clog the system while we're not checking. All right. Here's that same drain, that three-quarter inch drain, and you'll notice we've got it open from the top, going to a T. And the reason for this is so it doesn't ever start to siphon and suck water out of that tank that shouldn't be coming out. That way we maintain a, a constant height here. That way at the end of our uh, pipes going back to the grow beds, we have a good pressure. And let me show you that right quick. That's our pressure coming out. Almost like it's pumped, that's just gravity feed. That's all that is. Let's go on down here, and we'll look at our overflow. We're actually going to add a new 90 to this and a drain pipe and stick that on down inside the tank a little farther. But that's our overflow. That's all the water that's coming out of the overflow, so that's good. Normally, there's none coming out of this. You'll see we've got two-inch pipes here. This one's just here to hold our plastic up until we build our cover for this one. But here's your two-inch pipe with a 90 coming out of this grow bed right here. Let me show you that grow bed. We've got two more two-inch pipes on that end. I'm going to go around the other side so we can see that closer. Okay, this is at a reverse angle. This, like I said, is from one of our grow beds. This is from our grow bed to our far left now. You'll see this pipe extended on through. Now the reason we kept the pipe up high is because our sump tank is only three foot in the ground. All right, so we wanted to stay above the edge of that. And you'll notice with this grow bed right here, if you're looking under there, you see our 90 is actually pushing down on the plastic. We had to do that in order for that middle bed to drain. So let's go ahead and have a look see at one of these uh, auto siphons. We'll pull this one out. You'll notice the first thing, we've got a bolt in the top of this that is a stainless steel bolt. This is our bell. It's a three inch thin walled pipe. We've got a four inch screen that we that we built. And then inside, I'm not going to pull it out, I'm just going to show it to you. It's a two inch pipe. I'm hoping you can see down in there real well. So we maintain two inch from here all the way out to the, the sump tank so that these things drain properly. Now remember when I told you about water flow? If you don't have proper water flow, you've got issues. Well, if there's not enough water flow, we had a, a different pump. Uh, it, it was rated as a larger pump than the one we have now at 1,360 gallons per hour, but it wasn't pumping uh, enough water. It just didn't have enough head on it. Um, outright side by side, they, the old pump does better than the new one if, if it's only about a foot head. But you start looking at a four foot head, five foot head, and it dropped off so much it just wasn't enough water. Now I'm just looking, I think this one, this one's getting closer to the rate of drain. You can see there. Another very important thing about uh, your, your auto siphons. If this pipe right here, if your stand pipe is not straight up and down or real close to it, you're going to have issues. Uh, it, it just it, it won't work well. It'll, it'll start draining and won't get that swirl effect that it's supposed to have like in a toilet bowl uh, that, that you need for it to actually kick in, engage, and, and suck your bed dry. You also notice here we, we've got this bolt. Again, the reason for this bolt is when you put these in here, if they start to siphon and you want to stop them, 
you can't get your fingers around the outside to hardly get these out. So we added this bolt. It's a stainless bolt. The nuts are not stainless, but they're not in the water. They're not going to get wet. We're not worried about it. Uh, if we start seeing issues, we'll just change them out to stainless, but that's just something we had on hand. So we'll wait for this thing to start uh, auto siphoning, and then we'll come back and look at it. All right, we're just about to start draining over, so we're going to put our bell back on here. I've just been watching it, getting ready. Now let's go back over here and we'll watch this uh, pipe until it starts to drain. You can see it's a few little trickles coming out. That's possibly because I just stuck the siphon on. Roll around here. See a little better. You can see it coming on. Very quickly starts to pick up speed. Now it's going to hold here for a few seconds while the bed finishes filling up. Then you'll notice it starts to pulse a little bit. And as it's pulsing, that's it getting ready to actually start its siphon. That's it water swirling and pulsing, getting more and more. And at some point, it'll finally catch and go ahead and empty that bed. You'll also notice it should get quite loud when it starts. A lot of people keep asking about this water, the color of this water. It's red because of the iron that we put in there, uh, which is offered on our site. If you if you need iron, if you've got a a pH of 7.6 or above and you need to add iron to your system the iron we sell is, is what you need. We're, we're about to start carrying the other irons as well because uh, we're bringing our systems down below 7.6 once you get below 7.6 there is a cheaper iron to use than what we use. You can see it starting to pick up and start to pulse like I talked about that's that siphon, that's where the water in that siphon is starting to come together and form a, an actual whirlpool cone Almost, almost, kind of like watching a cake bake, right? Almost, it's almost comical. You'll also notice the algae around the tank, uh, if you can see the tank in this. Uh, that's because we just put this dark colored cover over. This co cover's actually up. Oh, there we go. You see the whole pipe's moving. That's how fast it's coming out. And that's just a huge amount of water. Let's walk back around here and look at the bell. You see it's sucked over to one side here. It has got a lot of suction pressure on it. Without that bolt, you would not be able to get that out. That's how much suction it's got. Again, in order to use these two inch sand pipes, you must have adequate water flow coming in. Also, coming out, depending on how your system's set up, this one is a straight pipe. So it comes straight out and there's enough back pressure to start the, uh, the auto siphon. The reason for that is this pipe is slightly uphill. Not much, just slightly. We couldn't get it any lower because of the sump tank. This one is level, so we're having to use a 90 and turn it up, get enough black pressure to actually start that auto siphon. It's a very simple setup. In just a second, I'm going to pull that bell back out and show you how it's cut and why it's cut, where it's cut. We'll let this finish up. Again, there's still lots of water coming out of that. And other than the red tent, it's really clean water. No solids coming out. The bed's doing its job as far as the biofilter is concerned. These beds are really working. A lot of people talk about putting swirl filters in with their, their media beds. In this type of system, for a small grower, you really don't need a swirl filter. You don't need any kind of biofiltration. Uh, that's what your media is for. Now, if you wanted to add a uh, raft bed to this system, which this system can handle three raft beds or three more media beds, whichever we wanted, you would want to run water from the sump that's already been filtered by the media beds into a swirl filter and into your raft bed. If you wanted to add three more media beds, then you would want to add three more outlets on your fish tank 
add another larger pump, double the size of this pump up to 2,400 gallons per hour, that way it pumps enough to all three beds. That way all your siphons can work just like this one is. It's just about to run out of water and finish, and as soon as it does, we'll go back and look at that bell siphon and how it's built. A lot of water comes out of that bed. These are 12 foot long, 2 foot wide, 1 foot deep. There's a lot of water in there, so it takes a while for it to drain. I've seen a lot of people talk about they should start in, you know, 15 to 30 seconds and run 15 or 30 seconds and quit. With this size bed and this size standpipe, that's just not going to happen. Uh, we'd have to jump on up to a 4 inch, and it's stopping now. That siphon's been broke. And it's just emptying out this pipe now from where water is backed up in it. So let's go over and look at our bell siphon for the one that just drained. We'll pull this out. Of course, like I said, we got the bolt in the top. we got a 3 inch thin wall. And these cuts right here, these cuts are an inch and a half deep. Alright, and the size of the legs are not really important. I think the smaller they are, the better. I was just afraid to get too much smaller with this uh, because I didn't want it to get weak. So being a thin wall pipe, it's, it is fairly weak. The one thing you want to be sure about is if you do something like this and you add a bolt, silicone it. You don't want any air escaping through here, otherwise your beds won't drain. Also, if you take these apart very often, or very much while you're building it, if you put the cap on, take it off, put the cap on, take it off, it's going to start getting loose here, and it's going to leak air around here. So you don't want that either. Now looking down in here, we've got 12 inches of media in this bed, and if you'll look, there's about 3 inches down to the top of our standpipe. Alright, now what we did was get this standpipe in here, we monitored how full that bed was getting before it would drain, and we actually shortened it from where we started. So it's it's quite a bit short. I don't have the exact dimensions. I'd have to pull it out. But uh, depending on the hardware you use at the bottom of the bed to tie into your bulkhead fitting or whatever you use to go through your bed, uh, the, the dimension of this pipe will change a little. I guess we should put together a kit using the exact hardware. Uh, that way we could send it out and folks could just, you know, fill the kit in and it would work straight away. Um, now the other thing you can do if your water is a little bit deep here, uh, if, if you don't want to shorten your standpipe or you can't shorten your standpipe, let's say you bought a kit and you can't, uh, you just can't shorten it because you don't have a saw to cut that pipe down, uh, you can add more grow media to raise your level of the grow media up. That way your water is inch and a half to two inches below your grow media. If you don't, you're going to end up with two things happening. One, algae growth on top of your grow media, and you're going to have a lot of evaporation due to wicking uh, on your rocks, sucking the water up to the surface and the sun getting it. Alright folks, that's it for about now. Uh, I did make a cap while we were waiting, waiting for our, our overflow in our fish tank. I'll put that in momentarily. Uh, but that's it. Uh, if you found this information useful, please share it. Um, if you're not coming to us from Facebook, please join our Facebook uh, group. It's just, just search True Aquaponics. We're there. We'll add you. Uh, great to have you. Have a great day.